Greetings adventurers, my name is Kramer. Welcome back into the kitchen. On today's episode of Cooking Anachronism, we are making festival hand pies. This coming to you from the official Elder Scrolls cookbook. All of the ingredients and the link to the book can be found in the description. Now, the description for the hand pies themselves are as follows. And this is important because it sort of plays into how I see these hand pies fitting into our lifestyles. It says, these savory little hand pies are easily transported and easily eaten on the go, making them a common snack at festivals and other social gatherings throughout Skyrim. They are especially popular at the Fire Festival at the Bard's College in Solitude. With a flaky crust and rich filling, it's a challenge to eat just one. Wash it down with a little of Sans Spiced Wine, another local favorite. Now, I find that last sentence important because I actually have a mold wine recipe already here on the channel, and I do think that these would pair together very, very well. So briefly, what we have prepared here is a tablespoon roughly of butter. That is just to cook the meat in. We are using one to two cloves of garlic, just depending on how big your cloves are, minced so that they can incorporate with the meat, half a tablespoon of storm cloak seasoning, three quarters of a pound of ground beef, half a cup of sour cream, half a cup of grated cheddar cheese, a full cup of cooked white rice, salt and pepper to taste, and of course, pie dough. And finally, finishing off with enough heavy cream just to baste over the top of the pies when they're ready to go into the oven. Now, as I'm going through this recipe, I'm actually going to be adding my own little uh, quality of life improvements because I think there are steps that will make this easier that aren't detailed in the book. The first step is to take that butter and melt it down over medium to medium high heat in a pan. Then we're going to add the garlic, let that cook until it gets to a nice golden color. And then we add the meat three quarter pounds of ground beef. Now this is where uh, our recipe for the video is taking a slight deviation because I actually didn't have three quarters of a pound of ground beef. So I substituted the rest of the weight with some ground pork instead. So that is something I encourage everyone to do with every recipe. You think that an adventurer, you think that a medieval person back in the day would look at a recipe and go, I don't have all the ingredients for it. So uh, I guess I just can't make it. No, they improvise, they adapt, they overcome. After all of the meat has been cooked along with the garlic, everything is browned up nicely. The meat should probably be cooked fully all the way through. We're gonna turn that heat down to a medium, medium low, and then we're going to add the sour cream and we're going to add the rice, stirring to make sure all of that gets incorporated fully. And you'll see in the footage here that I'm doing my best to break up those little clumps of meat, break up the little clumps of rice because I want this to be as pasty of a consistency as possible. I didn't quite succeed, but I think that is what we should should be shooting for, that's going to fit into the pies as filling the best. After the sour cream and the rice have been fully incorporated in the pan, we're going to take that off the heat and then add the cheese in, letting that slowly melt as we are stirring it around. Now we can prepare our pie dough. Now here is the second deviation of the video. The book simply calls for the rye pie dough recipe, which is also in the official Elder Scrolls cookbook. But neither the recipe for the actual festival hand pies or the recipe for the rye pie dough actually tell you how much pie dough is yielded, how much you need for this recipe. Um, I'm using store-bought pre-made pie dough for this video simply for convenience sake. I'm assuming uh, many people are going to like to do that, but if you want to go all the way, I'm sure it'll taste really, really good. You're going to take that pie dough, roll it out, and then cut it, in this case using the old medieval Tupperware method to create roughly four to five inch diameter circles. We want an even number of circles because we're actually going to be layering them. We're not folding them like dumplings, we're actually creating tiny little pies. But we ran into the problem that I think one box of pie dough, which essentially comes with two shells, one for the bottom and one for the top of the pie, is not enough for the amount of filling that the recipe itself creates. So my recommendation is if you're using store-bought pie dough, buy two of those boxes. Each box should have two rolls in it. So you have a total of four. That should yield enough. And for the record, one box of that pie dough, which was two shells, probably around 10 inches in diameter each, that yielded a total 
of 12 little circles, which means we are getting six pies. This brings us to my third recommendation that is not detailed in the book, and that is if you want to be able to add more filling and really get these pies to have as much in them as you can, cut all of the circles at two different sizes. So the bottom piece is at say four or five inches, and then the top piece is at maybe six or seven inches. That way you have that extra bit of room. After all the circles are cut out, we can go ahead and put the filling in the center, making sure to leave a little bit of room around each of the pie circles. Now again, this is the fourth difference. The recipe tells us that we should be putting these circles and filling them in the pan that we're going to be baking in. I think it's going to be a lot easier if you don't do that and do them on a flat surface instead. You can see in the footage here that I'm struggling against the rim of the pan because it's not giving me enough room to actually do the next step, which is to crimp the edges of the pies using a fork. I originally started using this little wooden fork because I thought it would look very aesthetic on camera, but I ended up switching out for a metal fork because I was afraid that I was going to break the tines on this little wooden fork um, with the amount of pressure that I needed to really get these to seal up. Which brings us, I think, to the fifth difference, my recommendation to you to make your life easier that isn't detailed in the recipe, which is to go around the outside of at least one of the edges uh, before you crimp it with just a little bit of water. That's gonna help it seal a lot better in my opinion. The first one I didn't do that and it just didn't take even with the crimping. And then as soon as I started adding water around the edges, it was a piece of cake, pun intended. So I'm not really sure why that isn't in the recipe. It just makes everything a lot easier. Go over your edges with a little bit of water before you do your crimping. Now the penultimate step is to go ahead and baste each of those with that heavy cream. And it just gives it this really decadent look and it's gonna come out nice and crispy. And I really didn't use a lot of heavy cream for this either. A little bit went a long way. Way. The final step is to preheat your oven to 350 degrees Fahrenheit. Celsius is also always listed. And we're going to let those bake for approximately 25 minutes. Now ours took a little bit longer than that. You're just gonna wanna keep an eye on them to make sure that they don't burn. If they look undercooked, they're undercooked. Once we take them out of the oven, we're gonna let them sit, cool down for just a couple minutes, and then it's time to serve them. Right off the bat, uh, this sealing method of the dough is the most effective one I've tried so far. Um, none of them have really broken open. That first bite, there's a lot of um, there's a lot of just crust, and I haven't really gotten the filling yet. For what they are and how nice they look, they're honestly a little underwhelming. It's not to say that they aren't tasty, um, but I'm I was kind of expecting more to sort of bite into, pun intended. Compared to we did beef pasties on the channel, we did uh, the chicken uh, handheld pies on the channel a couple weeks ago. These are like poutine, which if you're not familiar, it's like, it's really fancy French fries with like cheese curds and maybe like truffle oil on it or something like that. These are poutine. You get it as a nice appetizer or you get it when you're at the fair and you're walking around and you want something to munch on. You don't order poutine as like your dinner. Um, well, maybe you do. <laughs> they really are a snack, and that is what they're supposed to be. They're festival hand pies. I think these fit very well in a party setting or in a festival setting, a setting where you're gonna have a lot of guests. These would be a great appetizer, but I wouldn't classify these as an adventuring food. So even though the recipe description, I think quite accurately says it's challenging to eat just one, I would add the caveat that you kind of have to eat more than one or you're really not going to be full. So thank you for joining us on today's episode of Cooking Anachronism. I will see you very, very soon. And if you do decide to try these out, I very much hope you enjoy. In the meantime, I would like to wish you good luck on your adventures.